right away the first comment by somebody named Jamie is, I don't think OTA helped me at all. Don't recommend. PN1 is a legit certification. I'm working through PN2 and I enjoy it. So immediately now, I see this and it's like, okay, well, that's clearly not a good, you know, comment to have in your own group. But this is the first example of a negative criticism where there's no context at all added. Like the most important thing whenever you get a negative criticism is to contextualize the criticism. This is the online trainer show, trainer show, trainer show. This is the online trainer show. We shouldn't have a podcast. I literally typed in like a password and everything was on this computer for the most part that was on my last computer. OneDrive, I used OneDrive by Microsoft to back up all the stuff. So I just had to log into OneDrive. So basically this laptop is right where I left off with the other one. It's way oh, easier. Oh, nice. Way easier. Um, so so that's that's awesome, man. You know, it, it's I, I feel good about it. Uh, it's a bigger screen so I can see you guys better. I can annoy you more. And it, and, you know, everything's just, just amazing. Jonathan, I reached out to Mike D Dewar, Dewar, Dewar. I don't know. I can't remember the guy I was talking about in the, in the, um, oh, in the chat. messenger that was yeah. like, uh, yeah, I went three for three yesterday. I was like, yeah, three for three. What? He was like sales. I was like, oh, That's I don't amazing. interpret any window very well. You have to, <laughs> you have to spell it out for me. Did you guys Yeah, see... people are like legitimately having multiple successes from information yes. that they got from this podcast, which is like not anticipated in any way, but it's it's a happy accident. <laughs> and it's not something that we necessarily <laughs> wanted. Like it's not it's not like we were I mean we it's were... not something that we didn't want. Like, we didn't set out and we're like we actually we actually don't want anybody to have any value or get any have any success from information. It wasn't like wasn't like that was the stated goal. Um <laughs> but but the intent of the podcast certainly wasn't like we're going to give people such a good sales formula that they're going to crush three for three right, on sales right. one day by following it because then they don't buy our stuff. Right. <laughs> like I feel like I feel like we've done. I mean, obviously, I'm kidding. We've done a whole episode on this, but like I, I don't know. Like now, he doesn't need to like buy anything from us because he's so good at sales that probably lost a customer. You, you know what we're like, Jonathan. <laughs> We are like the Christmas underwear of podcasts, right? It's not something you necessarily wanted, but you did not want it. You know, we'll take it. And like, oh, look, you know, it'll come underwear. in handy, right? Yeah, yeah. Like I can use okay. the underwear. Like the first, the first Christmas that I spent with Allison's family, they gave me pajama pants, <laughs> and originally I was like. What in God's name is this? Like, out of all the things, you get me pajama pants. And then as the weeks went on, I was like, damn, I'm really happy to have these pajama pants. <laughs> so this podcast is like that. Like, 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 you didn't know you wanted it, but now it's like, wow, I'm actually yeah. getting news out of it. What? <laughs> I might as well keep it. I was going to read well, it. When somebody gives it to you. Yeah, and when somebody gives it to you, you're like, I really just did not. I don't understand this. I don't particularly see the reason for this. This is like something that a mother-in-law that doesn't know much about you yet gives you because it's so generic. And it just feels like it makes sense. And then after a while, you're like, yo, I feel like she... I feel like she knows some things. It's <laughs> <Right. laughs> panned out. I'm married up. You married well, Jonathan. You know, if you marry into a family that I gives did, you pajama pants, you've married well, my friend. You made, a, you made a good choice. Shout out to Dr. Allison and her family. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, pajama pants givers. You know, you guys, you guys are the real MVPs here. Just, just for background, for the people that don't know, Jonathan is, we, we found out he's like, 99 what would you say 99.8 percent eastern european jewish down in like he's if there was a scale of jewishness you're you're high on the continuum is that correct oh i'm yeah i'm all the way there pretty, pretty oh yeah <laughs> it's uh uh my 23 me showed 99.6 percent ashkenazi <laughs> jewish which is like eastern european jewish and the other 0.4 percent is like of Eastern European descent. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, like, there's no denying it. It's like, yo, nobody's, oh 
nobody's ever nobody's ever had a baby with a slave right, right. nobody's it's ever like integrated <laughs> like we just purebred <laughs> everybody jewishness you know why yeah. why why even research oh, yeah. the last six percent is what i want to know like that was it really necessary did you need to know what the point was what is 99 it, no 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 it, it comes up on a report, right? right? So I didn't do any like, I was like, oh, I wonder what the extra 0.4% is. No, it all comes up on a report. We, we, we did it. We did it for um, a few reasons because it gives you like your whole genealogy. First of all, I figured out that I'm positive for uh, a mutation in what's called a bracket 2 gene which is actually like something really common with Eastern European Jewish really? people. If you're a woman, it's a serious issue. Oh yeah, if you're a woman, like your odds of breast and ovarian cancer go up mm. to like some sources say 90%. Wow. Like basically if you have it and you're a woman, when you're done having kids, you get your ovaries removed. Wow. Um, it's, it's really serious. If you are a man, i.e. Right. me, and I knew I had a 50-50 chance of having it because my right. dad has it, then Odds of prostate cancer do go up to like 1%, 1.5%. Like basically I need to get prostate exams a little bit earlier. When I'm like 40, I'm going to have to start that. So that's going to be fun. But also uh, it's important to know because if I have a daughter, there's a 50% chance of her oh, having it. And so, you know, we wanted to know this um, – for a few reasons, you know, we'd love to have another kid and there's potentially some ways that you can do like in vitro mm -hmm. um, uh, impregnation where you can basically have like your sperm cleaned in a sense and this mutation removed. Oh, wow. Yes. Yeah. So there's so there's some like, yeah, we haven't done anything like that, but we wanted to know for that reason and also just for like from a health optimization sense. So, you know, we took the whole we took the whole DNA sequencing and we're working with a naturopathic doctor friend of Allison's who actually put it into software and basically tells you it's like where you are, where you naturally convert stuff and your body functions well based on your genealogy and where it doesn't. For example, I can't convert the precursor of vitamin D, meaning that I should probably supplement with vitamin D, but vitamin D3, because I shouldn't supplement with the precursor of vitamin D because I'm not going to be able to convert it. Mm -hmm. And I also can't convert it as well from the sun because of the way my DNA is. Uh, so there's, there's, you know, stuff like that is kind of neat when you're looking at um, kind of optimization stuff, you know, physical, mental as well. So for what so, it's worth, yeah, that's, whenever, that's really whenever you're ready to go, like for the whole prostate exams and all that stuff, I know that Brent's going to have valuable pointers Absolutely. about being naked Absolutely. in a doctor's office. I was just going to say that, uh, McKinsey, McKenna, Michaela, uh, has already been broken in. So what, what's one more what? penis, right? I mean, does does the scribe does the scribe need to be here too? Yeah, right. Does the scribe need to be here? No, like, you like make sure like, the does the scribe need to be? You need the scribe, guys. Does 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 the scribe need to be like in here too? You know could what I'm saying? Be book. Could be a twelve book, Jonathan. <laughs> like, could they not just be like in the corner of the room? Like, do we they need to be in here too? The way you wrote "Ignite the Fire" was by <laughs> documenting your daily experiences. This could be book number twelve. <laughs> or, or, you know. Also, I want to circle back around to something else you said because I want to meet the person that works in genetics and that hands me the business card that says Michael Johnson sperm cleaner. Like, I want to know who cleans the yeah, sperm. Right. Like, I really need I to know. Spit out my coffee. <laughs> <laughs> our, I really need to see that title on a business card before I die. No, but like sperm sweeper. Right? Make it make it snazzy. Sperm sweeper. Sweep it. Sweep that sperm sweep. That there's also gotta be It's like the sham wow, but for sperm. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. I feel like I don't know how the rest of you feel, but it's the slap chop. Right. I it's the like slap chop. Bam. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody out there listening feel like Jonathan knows way too much about himself at this point? I mean, the 23 and me wasn't enough. You know, he's got some deep understanding of himself. You know, you're, you're highly self-aware. You know why? 
You know why? You know why? So um, I, I, I'll, I'll get a bit personal. Alison and I have had <laughs> a, a harder time getting pregnant right. with our second child. Um, and so to the point where, you know, we've, we've been to the doctors, we've had diagnostics uh, done, mm-hmm. which means I went through the uh, awkward and also hilarious experience mm-hmm. of going to the doctor doctor and then handing you a little yeah, cup yeah, and telling you to go into room you're, you're three. You're a good right. husband, Jonathan Goodman. You're a good husband. So this experience is one of the funniest things that has ever <laughs> gone on in my life because you go there and there's like there's like three other dudes in the office and you just give them a head nod, right? Because right? you, you know what? The woman yeah. calls you over and it was it was an old Indian lady who's done this like a million times, mm-hmm. but for everybody who goes in, it's like the weirdest, most awkward thing. Right. Yeah. You know, you sign your paper. It's a medical procedure, right? Yeah. You sign your paperwork or whatever it is. She calls you up. She gives you a little cup. She gives you the instructions. Mm-hmm. She tells you what room to go in. <laughs> and she, she tells you what, what assistance devices there are in each room oh. and, and how to clean them before and afterwards. Oh, man. oh my God. And how to... And how to work the TV and the various channels on the TV. Okay. I hope, I hope there's a sticker on the TV that says, for your medical pleasure. Uh, so at this point, and everything on the TV, by the way, was from the 1970s and 80s. Oh, <laughs> it was like, gosh. Did the so, TV have so, one of those okay, so like, characters in front? <laughs> No, but the room was like Serrano after four. So you go, so you're in the room. So think about, think about this now. I'm in the room and I'm like, well, how long do I take? Right? right? Like she knows when I went in here. Right. Right. <laughs> there are implications here. Is there like, is there, is there an appropriate amount of time before I exit the room? Oh man, uh, I don't know. I, I want to. I, I don't know. I want to see the search history on your Google that says national averages for ejaculation times. <laughs> so, I'm, so I'm sitting in the room and we're looking it up. before we're starting, looking it up, trying it up, to ever. figure, and trying, trying to figure trying to figure out what the appropriate course of action is to take. I'm sitting in the room before taking any action, <laughs> trying to figure it out. Now, keep in mind, this is 7.30 in the morning, which is very early to be right. doing any of this. Right. It's 5 okay? o'clock somewhere, Jonathan. <laughs> right. So, so this is all going through my head. And finally, I said, you know what? This is going to be awkward no matter oh what. This is, you know, medical start to finish for this woman. I'm just going to, like, get in, get out as fast as I can. So I finish. And, of course, at that point now, you've got to walk back to the right. desk to the little tin tray and put your cup with the label on top of oh, the tray. Yeah. And then you've got to walk past the next slew oh, of dudes that are in there. Waiting again, the nod. <laughs> now, I had to go downtown for this procedure. <laughs> I live like 20 minutes or so. Much I, can, so I figured, there's so much I can say about you going downtown for this procedure, Jonathan. <laughs> Please don't repeat that. So, so I'd already made the effort to go downtown. I'm thinking, well, I may as well just get breakfast and work in a coffee shop before going home or going back to my office. So I'm in a coffee shop and I was there for about 45 minutes. Now the coffee shop is the coffee shop at the bottom of the office building that this office is in. Of course, of course, within 30 minutes of me sitting there, the Indian woman who works at the desk is on a break, goes and gets a coffee, says hello to me like we're friendly at the desk. Now all the people in the coffee shop know that I was in the office. And at that point, I just picked up my stuff and went. God bless you. You're you're a a good husband. Hey, hey, Amber, what what data do you have for us on the national average for ejaculation times? Specifically regarding sex, but three to seven minutes. Three to seven minutes, okay. So Jonathan, were you in that range? You're in the three to seven minute range? You're over under? 
tell you one thing, man. It felt like a okay. lot longer. <laughs> we'll we'll leave it there. We'll leave it there. Because quite honestly, I don't know where else to take it. Probably, probably yeah. less. Yeah. Uh, but if but if you if you got just a recap, Jonathan went downtown, <laughs> and then we did three to seven minutes. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's all I have to say about that. Oh, God. God bless you, Jonathan Goodman, and and to all the sperm cleaners out there. You guys are the real. <laughs> you guys are the real MVPs. You are yep. frontline workers in uh, product <laughs> reproduction and health. Uh, you guys are essential. You know, so happy New Year to you, sperm cleaners out there. Uh, so we've got something to talk about. It's not like we haven't talked about it. Oh, gosh. There's more. There's more. This may be the one that we need to cut off uh, before the ad pops in. (laughs) But so we're talking, we've got a subject today, and it started out one way. I'm going to let Jonathan, if he can remember what he said, articulate the way that we're going to express it. But we're basically going to talk about um, sort of reframing the feedback that you get. Uh, in terms of your 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 sales offers, et cetera, Jonathan, you I'll let you explain it because I don't I don't remember the exact. Well, let's let's have yeah. There's there's actually two different situations I want to talk about here, but let's have Amber repeat the actual revised title of the episode because I don't remember what it was, even though I suggested it right. maybe twenty minutes ago. Public criticism and sales. There you go. Cool. Awesome. Yeah, that's 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 good. Yeah. Um, that sounds like something that I'd say. Okay. So this past week, <laughs> two separate times, in uh, two different one of our groups, one of them was an online trainer, and yet the other one was in the online trainer academy student group, mm-hmm. there was a, a negative comment made about uh, – one of them was made about an online trainer academy. The other one was made about online trainer coaching. And – I want to I want to talk about how to respond to these types of things, and I want to talk about the philosophy behind responding to these things. Now, first off, in in almost every group that you're in, you never see anything negative against the person who runs the group or the person who owns the company because they delete it out of the group. Let me first talk about why, for two different reasons, that is um, a horrible thing to do. One, like. That person is going to go and say something even more negative about you somewhere else that you can't control. 100%. So you stopping them from saying something negative about you or about your product. Um, and then and then they say something negative about you or your product and then you kick them out of your group. They're going to be even more pissed off at you and even more loud and it's going to blow up in your face even more. The other is like not every single person is right for your product or service. And it is, we work very, very hard to make it very clear who our products and services are for or who they're not for. But ultimately we can't control it. And some people buy our stuff that it's simply not right for. And as a result, they don't have a stellar experience. That sucks. I like, I'm not happy about that, but that's the reality. And I think it's very important to be able to have that understood like nobody's perfect no product is perfect no service is perfect for everybody right that's we all know that clearly whatever we do is not right for everybody we all know that clearly if you sell to like tens of thousands of people every year like we do it you'd have to be crazy to think that every single person has had an absolutely remarkable stellar experience right you could give a hundred hundred dollar bill on the street and two of them would throw it back in your face and say, you're an asshole. Like that's just, yeah. that's just the reality. So to try to hide that is deceitful, mm-hmm. is not transparent and actually misserves you. That said, when there is criticism publicly, particularly on your own platform about your own stuff, it's very easy quickly to take offense to that and like have that rock you to your core, right? And, And immediately emotionally respond, particularly a public response on social media is understanding who you're responding to and who's going to see that response. 
Ambu, you and I talk about this a lot with your responses. Whenever you respond to anybody, and this is not just to criticism, you respond to the person for sure and you appreciate them, but you also need to be able to generalize the response to somebody who may not be in the know and give them enough information to be able to make sense of the response and also move further. So this is why a lot of the time you'll see in our groups, we include statements of, by the way, for anybody who didn't know, the Online Trainer Academy is blah, 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 blah. If you want to learn more, here's a link. Like we'll add that to the bottom of our responses because we know like if somebody uses an acronym and they say, hey, who here you know, has experience with OTA? Well, not everybody reading that knows what OTA is, right? So it's very important to understand that you're responding to the person who makes the comment, but your response is public and there are going to be a lot of onlookers as well that you may never hear from, right? They may never interact on it, but they'll see it. And so that's important whether it's criticism or not. But I want to talk about two very specific instances, and I'm literally going to read you well, I'm not going to read you the whole thing because some of them are, are pretty long, but I'm going to actually use like very specific things that happened in our groups this past week. Hey, Jonathan Goodman here. This podcast is made possible thanks to people like you. Here's a quick word from our sponsors. Are you still trying to pick your online training software? If so, let me make this easy for you. Go with PT Distinction. It's truly the best, and I'm not just saying that because they're our sponsor. We actually use PT Distinction for our own online fitness business, online trainer coaching, and we're really happy with it. From onboarding to programming to client communication, PT Distinction has everything you need to run your online fitness business smoothly, and it's super simple to use. Now, normally they offer a free 30-day trial, but as a listener of the Online Trainer Show, you get a free 60-day trial, so you can make sure you love them before spending a dime. If you want to deliver first-class service to your clients while reclaiming your time, then visit onlinetrainer.com slash PTD to sign up for your free 60-day trial today. If you're a fitness and nutrition coach that's looking to master online coaching so that you can help more people, make more money, and have more freedom, then the Online Trainer Academy can help. OTA gives you the framework, knowledge, and support to have predictable success with your online coaching business. From marketing to business development to how to assess and motivate your clients online, it is constantly updated and refreshed to keep up with a dynamic market. Not only that, OTA is proven. In seven years, we've helped over 30,000 coaches in 87 countries go online. Truth is, we know what works, so you can get right to the success part. And in case you're busy working a full-time job or you're a full-time parent, know that you can go at your own pace. There's no deadlines to complete OTA and you have lifetime access. That said, if you are ready to make a rapid change and finish the course in the next 8 to 12 weeks, you can expect to invest 3 to 5 hours each week on the program. And here's the best part. If you join today, you will make an extra $1,000 a month in 90 days or I'll give you your money back. So if you're ready to build the fitness business you want and make the money you deserve, go to onlinetrainer.com slash academy to enroll today. And I hope to see you in there. So um, let's talk about the first one happened in the Online Trainer Academy. So uh, or the Online Trainers Unite group. I apologize. Can, can we also get a... And so this is our public group for online trainers. So this is not... Can we also get a Petty Carol response What's up? to each one of these? I would, I like, I would like... <laughs> I'd like to hear your response, but I would also yes. like to hear a Petty Keto response. Uh, I got possible. it. I'm on this. Yes, she, I'm oh, on She's this. warmed up. Okay. You take it away, okay. Jonathan. Okay. So Online Trainers Unite, for those who don't know, is a public Facebook group for anybody who's interested in online training. So it is not it, – it certainly has people who have studied from us and, and worked with us before. But it's not only our customers. Right. So in that group, a lot of people who join it, join it to learn about us. Right. And so in this case, um, on January 5th, Ryan posted asking for some advice. He's thinking about he's planning on enrolling in both Precision Nutrition and the Online Trainer Academy in the future. He's having a hard time deciding on which one he should do first. And then he gives some context to the question, which doesn't really matter to, for this conversation. Right away, the first comment by somebody named Jamie is, I don't think OTA helped me at all. Don't recommend. PN1 is a legit certification. I'm working through PN2 and I enjoy it. So immediately now, 
I see this and it's like, okay, well, that's clearly not a good, you know, comment to have in your own group. But this is the first example of a negative criticism where there's no context at all added. Like the mm -hmm. most important thing whenever you get a negative criticism is to contextualize the criticism. The biggest problem is that there's often a comment or there's criticism about you or about something you do without appropriate context, which means that it's just negative. It's like, oh, that thing sucked. It's like, well, that thing might have not quite been right for you for your very specific situation, but it could also be perfect for somebody else. Case in point, I will go to restaurants and book hotels based off of negative reviews of other people. If somebody gives a one-star review on TripAdvisor and they're like, I went here to party and all there was was families and it looks like the families were having a great time, but I really wanted to drink and get wasted. I'm like, I'm a go right there. <laughs> <laughs> right? Keto, how many reviews do you have out there? Keto, so, of whole channels. <laughs> oh, if they don't let me party, they're they're yeah. all terrible. They're all yeah. I give terrible reviews for sure. So, so you, you go to the opposite of the places that Keto. <laughs> more or less, more or less. So, um, so this response came in this comment, and there's nothing. There's there's no reason why she said that she had a negative or not so stellar experience with OTA, right? So there's nothing for me to go on. And so I could go one of two ways. I could ask her, but at this point, like, there's no point in kind of like, oh, what didn't you like about it? Like, I'm not going to get the information. So at this point now, the only response here is to show just how deeply you care and how well you take care of people. Mm -hmm. Because onlookers now are looking at this and saying, okay, well, like, Maybe OTA isn't that good. Mm -hmm. Well, all that I want to communicate here is I give so many shits and this hurts me and I'm going to do in the case where this happens, I am going to do every single thing I can to make it right. So my response was, wow, I'm so sorry to hear that. This message literally just crushed me. I'm so sorry that we failed you and wish you all of the best in the future. If you'd like a refund, please contact my team. I don't ever want anybody to not have success with anything that I've produced. And the reason that I responded this way is simple. There's no way for me to say to her, oh, let's work on it at this point. Mm -hmm. Like this is that, that ship is gone, right? She's made this public in my group. So I could have just deleted it, but uh, she actually commented back later, I feel like a, I won't say the word, but D, I wasn't paying attention to the group. The question was asked. Mm. No doubt that you're an amazing guy, Jonathan. I just didn't find much benefit in the course. I don't want a refund though. It's overall good product. Keep doing there you. There you go. So like she didn't realize that she posted it in our group. She thought she was bad mouthing me in another group. That's <laughs> <laughs> basically what she said. Um, but but at the end of the day, right, think about what I wanted to get out of this. It's like all, like all that I wanted to communicate here is we deeply care and it's not okay for a single person to not do well with our program. And I'm willing to stand by that and offer them a refund, right? So that's situation number one. Situation number two is a little bit different. So situation number two is in our online trainer academy students group. And Kevin asked uh, if uh, Kevin asked about online trainer coaching. So this is our fitness coaching service because we have another cohort coming soon, and we always sell them out, which is why you might not have heard of it. But uh, we have another cohort coming soon. He's interested in joining it. Uh, you know, he said Jonathan Goodman is a client in his own company, which is kind of cool, which is true. Like I don't actually work in the company; I'm a client, <laughs> um, just like anybody else. He's thinking of enrolling it, and he asked about. You know, and, and keep in mind, like in all of these threads, there are multiple people who are like, yeah, that program's awesome. I had an incredible experience. So this is like one of many that somebody had negative. But, you know, so Annalise is the first comment. I'm in the current OTC group. I love it. I've learned a lot about programming. It's awesome to have somebody else telling me what workouts to do for one. So like that's the first comment. There's a couple other comments of people that had a good experience. But then Leanne, who's awesome. Like we love Leanne. He had a, she had a great experience in OTA. Her experience in OTC was less than stellar. And um, she says why. So I won't read her whole comment, 
But she basically said the app is awful. The programming needed substitution. So I felt as well, I, I felt I may as well do it myself. And the coaching was far too impersonal for me. So my response to her, because she gave, she basically said, I, she had a less than stellar experience. So the response is similar here. You make sure that she's heard. You make sure that you appreciate it. And I had already spoken to Leanne about her experience in OTC and stuff like that. But then it's very important to contextualize what she said. Because, yeah, the app is awful, but that's been fixed. There's a reason why the programming needs substitutions. There is a reason why we're willing to do some substitutions and unwilling to do others. There's a reason why we do a group coaching approach and it's not a truly personalized approach. And that reason is right for some people and not right for other people. My response, hey, hey, we've spoken before, but since you commented here, I'll apologize again that you had less than a stellar experience in OTC. To further contextualize your experience, Number one, yes, we had some issues with the Android app. So I want to be clear that it was just the Android app. It sucked. That sucks. It's much better for the next cohort. Number two, um, I, I say I made notes on the substitutions below because I, I wrote a different comment below. But basically, the, the, the reason why we substitute in some cases and are unwilling to substitute in other cases is because we need to maintain the integrity of the program. We've spoken about this before. Each of these programs in OTC takes 10 to 15 hours to put together by some of the most skilled trainers worldwide, and that's not hyperbole. Our team, therefore, has strict guidelines on how these can be adapted based off of the commonly accepted scientific principles of adaptation. Rare, but there are some cases where we say we can't make a change that the client wants because it would actually be a disservice to them in ways that the client might not actually understand, right? Like they're just like, oh, why can't you just do this? It's like, well, because the entire program is a 12-week progressive program, throwing in this random exercise is actually going to do more harm than good. Um, so I explain that. And then number three, in this case, a truly personalized service from scratch provided by the caliber of people we have involved in OTC would cost somewhere from five to $8,000 for 12 weeks. So there's a trade-off here. I opted to build a system where you get the best of both worlds, an affordable option from world-class coaches. And then I just said straight up, that's obviously not for everybody and it wasn't for you. So I'm glad that you figured out that about yourself and also about what you want to offer for us. Like the decision to not offer, the decision to not make substitutions in some cases in her program, the decision to not offer a truly personalized experience from scratch. There were a lot of very important reasons for that, that some people are like, yeah, like I'm willing to pay $5,000 for 12 weeks. Oh, this is 500 if you get in with the, with the early bird discount. Because we're able to do this, basically I said, okay, well, a truly personalized program at this level, what's the marginal gain in efficacy that you're gonna get from that versus more of a group training type structure from these people with guidelines on how it can be substituted and the support when you need it, right? And to me, the trade-off is maybe a tiny bit less in terms of how specific it is to you, although I might even argue that in terms of your actual results, but the cost is way down. Like I said, like 500 versus 5,000 plus, like 10% of what it would otherwise be. So I'm willing to accept that trade-off, and I think that's actually a good trade-off for most people where you can still have an unbelievable program that's going to be way better than what you do. You can still benefit from an unbelievable service, but it's not truly personalized. So all that I wanted to do in this case is I wanted to contextualize her criticism, right? And make it very known. Like, if you really want that truly personalized approach, OTC is not for you. But if you understand what I'm saying, then you may or may not appreciate it, right? And if you do, then OTC is the perfect program for you. So th that's, that's really what I wanted to hit on in terms of 
how you want to respond to perhaps negative feedback or criticism in order to make sales online, you're not actually trying to make a sale to that person. You want to make it right by that person for sure. You want to be honest. You want to be transparent. But you need to contextualize their experience for other people who have no background in what's going on, who have no history, who don't know anything about it so that they can actually appreciate what's going on. And you want to show how much you give a damn and how much you're willing to make it right if somebody doesn't have a negative experience. That makes sense because initially I was angry. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny because the, the, the OTA coaches actually had a thread in our Facebook chat about the comment by Jamie. And they were just like, John, I don't know how you kept it cool there, man. I was so angry. <laughs> It's like, well, first of all, I've been through this before, but also like, what am I going to gain out of being right. angry? Even if I was angry, like go and yell at your back door for a couple <laughs> seconds, get that out of your system, count to 10 and then come back. Right. Like <laughs> it's, it's not a slight on you. It's, you know, I mean, I don't really know what happened in that case, but we know that not everybody has a stellar experience in our program. But we take pride in that we always, always, always give a deep shit and always make it right, which is why you don't see negative things about us. Right. It's not that everybody has had 100% of people have had an amazing experience. It's that 100% of people have had a positive experience. Right. Mm -hmm. right. And I think that's what's right. important. Absolutely. I mean, on, only you'd literally have to be the churro man to get 100 out of 100 all the time. <laughs> <laughs> There's, there's only one worldwide product that satisfies every single time that, that you're engaging. That's, that's obviously the churro man. Um, but, you know, the thing that got... Only the churro man in Mexico, though. You saw that other picture yeah, about yeah. the churros. We got to post that, Amber. Those, those are like... The, this, if, if you... if you, Yo, know, if you saw the other churro truck... You know, like like the clean one that like looks like yeah. it's branded or whatever. This churro truck was sketchy. <laughs> oh, okay. That's the branding. You gotta you gotta go to the show notes to check out this picture. This was I, this was everything you would ever hope it yeah, to but, be. <laughs> oh, this churro it truck. Was it was so remarkably sketchy. Now. Disgusting <laughs> and gross. I mean, if I mean, that was in the United States. That person would have been served with a cease and desist so quickly. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you know, when I when I scrolled the picture in Messenger when you sent it, I immediately followed that up with the tetanus. <laughs> <laughs> That's how this rusted out vehicle was some kind of homemade roof on the front and back of it and some type of I don't know if it was a pneumatic or gas operated hose coming from some undisclosed location I don't know what it was. underneath the garbage in the truck bed. But do you but do you understand how dangerous it was for him? This guy is holding both tools for making these churros in his hand and they're like rusted up and gross. That is right. burning oil. <laughs> that he's spraying out of those things <laughs> like like this dude i mean i didn't get a good look at him but this dude must just be like oh, frozen with burning in the midst of oil all story. over got, up and down so. oh there you go you're back yeah you you we, you timed out it i didn't get a good look and then we didn't hear anything else oh oh i mean i didn't get a good look at it but like this dude has these the apparatus that he's using. He's holding both of them in each hand, and they're like rusted over. And like churros are made with boiling oil, right? Like this guy must be just burnt to a crisp <laughs> with his oil up and down his arms, right? It's just it's not churros. It's also pieces of the churro man skin that you're eating with your churro. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> Amber's alarmed. <laughs> I really shocked her. So, let so me, bad. before we leave, uh, let let me let me defer to Petty Keto, uh, <laughs> because I got to tell tell you, Keto and Jonathan, we appreciate you. You know, obviously that's that's the right way to go. That's that's how you run the business. We get that. Um, 
you know, but what did it for me, Keto, was the line when this person said, oh, my bad, I feel like a blankety blank. Um, I thought this was a different group. I was like, what the hell does that even mean? You know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So, so my, my, my cortisol levels shut up. I, I only meant you disrespect. I, I only meant you disrespect somewhere where you, you would exactly. See I, I would, yeah. I didn't mean to disrespect. It was, it was meant to be totally right. behind your yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And right. now I am sorry that I got caught. <laughs> right. right. Which is effectively what they were saying. Right. You know, what, when when you hear like, what do you think like the the petty kettle response may have been? <laughs> Jonathan is so, this is just <laughs> hypothetical. Jonathan is so collected. I'd be like, well, it didn't work for me. I couldn't make it work for you. Well, sucks to suck, it, it doesn't it? Froze. The universe <laughs> did not want the petty kettle to come out. I don't think I froze for the other ones, Brendan. No, I got it. You. Oh, okay. That was me? Okay. All right. Yes. I don't know. I'd I just be like, hey, too. man, I sucks to you. suck. Oh, yeah. It's my, it's my, it's my, it's my internet now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Also, also, Jonathan, your your moniker here today. I'm 100% triggered by what you, by what happy to be Canadian. I see the passive aggressiveness and what you're doing here, Jonathan. No, I'm not going to broach the subject <laughs> on this podcast, but I just want to let you know that I see what you've done there. Uh, I, I see the, I see the disrespect in what you've said. And and for anybody paying attention, we are recording this podcast on January 7th. <laughs> 2021 for in the future. Everything. If you if if this is farther in the future, you can Google what happened on January 6th, 2021 we'll in the United States. And then you'll, we'll you'll understand. You, you can yeah, draw your own interpretations. Um, yeah. Oh, it was basically go. it was basically bass pro shots. Oh my storming that is the congressional the best building. Description <laughs> ever. I yes. Yes. I'm yeah. Glad. Somebody I'm said you know, somebody said it's like it's like they're shooting an episode of the trailer park <laughs> boys at the Capitol today. <laughs> None of this came from nice. any of the Americans right. here, so <laughs> No, I'm just gonna be quiet. You know gonna, what? I'm this, gonna move along. This Mexican sitting in Canada has been kind of like just quietly, just you know, popcorn watching what's happening because you know. I don't know why I keep freezing. Uh, Bring me to to no end. Uh, but in any case, <laughs> I, yeah, yeah, it's I'm only you too. It's only you. Yeah, everybody everybody else, else is fine. fine. It's just me. Um, in any case, to my our Canadian participants here, I hope you're enjoying the show, and uh, to everybody else. I hope you guys got some insight. I have been enjoying the show for many years. <laughs> right. it's been four give or years, take, give or take three years and f- <laughs> give give or take three years and fifty weeks. Uh, I've been enjoying the show. <laughs> give or take. I've got no comment um, in. Um, yeah. However, uh, I thought I hope you guys got some- show notes. Yeah. I'm double parked. Yeah, we, we, we gotta go. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Really, some things to think about, John. You really did give us some great enlightenment about how to handle these situations, especially in a public format, um, because, you know, criticism out there. And, so, and some of it's con- actually constructive. Uh, to his point, there's a difference between saying, here are the contextualized sure. reasons why this did not work for me versus it sucks. That's a different statement. So, you know, I think one good thing that we can do is be able to draw the comparison between the two types of commentary, because there is value mm-hmm. in the contextualized version of, I didn't like it because. Then you have an opportunity to take in data. Yeah. Um, so One of the uh, best ways to sell anything, one of the best ways to sell anything is to be very clear and transparent who it is not for. Right. right. If somebody understands all of the people it's not for and all of the reasons why it might not work, and none of those apply to them, the the willingness to purchase increased substantially. Absolutely. And so it's actually really valuable to get some sort of negativity as long as you can contextualize it mm-hmm. for any onlookers because you won't ever get a more honest assessment of why this might not work. Absolutely. Which is really, really important. 
So on that note, yes. I want to say yes. that as, yes. as we have yes. been you. sitting yes. here, you in the, you in the me, background. me in the background, <laughs> as we were sitting here, I'm just so, watching uh, yet another payment. I don't know if that's oh. good or bad. But no, we, I'm not. Uh, once again, it's we just solved you, all your problems in about you know, 40, 50 minutes, oh giving you way too much information about the genealogy, lineage, and uh, microbiology of Jonathan Goodman. Uh, you've, you've overshared today, Jonathan, in a way that I never would have anticipated before. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I feel like I feel a little Jewish now, if I can say that. I don't know if I can say that. Allison, Allison was across from me at the table, too, when I was talking about that, which is the funniest <laughs> thing. She was just laughing so hard. I'm like, I basically was, if you look at me, I'm looking over my camera a bit. I was basically staring right her in the eye as I was saying that. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Oh, that's um, Carolina, say what you were going to say before before Ren didn't hear you because his own internet cracked Yeah, out no, I was saying show. that I'm very, like, I'm sitting here and I'm just watching yet another, like, payment come in for the program that I launched because you were talking about, uh, uh, you know, how I'm being again. clear. Oh, my God, Ren. Everybody can hear me except you. <laughs> <laughs> like, Ren, stop talking. <laughs> so, I'm just going to stop. You know, we'll talk about this next that's week. Because a lot has of a lovely smile in the picture. Awesome. Uh, Emma, can you screen? Can you screenshot Carol? The Because uh, that's, that's just a tremendously happy picture. Um, she makes me happy looking at her frozen. Image. Let's actually... Let's actually discuss for a minute what the number one worst thing to do, because we usually do the number two worst thing to do on a podcast, which is talk about our physical appearances. Right, right. The number one worst thing to do on a podcast is to have one person's internet cut out and somebody else is talking and that person's internet cut out and then they talk. So now there's two conversations going on at the same time on the same podcast. I, I think that actually is the worst I thing. Give up. The the yeah. listening experience for the last five minutes must have been terrible. Yeah. And I apologize for that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take uh, I'll take uh, I'll I'll take some of the guilt for my role in it because I played a good part in it. In any case, right. we got show notes. Uh, when take us home. OK, take us home. Online trader dot com slash Carolina made money. We get it. When take us on, home. On, OnlineTrainer.com slash podcast. You've been listening to the Online Trainer Show. Thank you for coming out and participating. And, uh, and we'll, we'll see you next time. Jingle, jingle it up. J jingle all the way. This is the Online Trainer Show. Trainer Show. Trainer Show. This is the Online Trainer Show. We shouldn't have a podcast. <laughs>